Three, two, one, go. Oh. Oh, I had no input selected. I fucked up the input too. Fuck, hold on. <laughs> Why do I have no input selected? It's always just there. Oh, it's because I unplugged. I unplugged something. Hold on. To take you for a walk. It's fine. Okay. Hello? Hello? Oh, what the fuck? Okay. Hello? Hello? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. It's been a hot minute since we've had to do our own test. I know, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. So you can say three, two, one now. Okay. <laughs> three, two, one, go. everyone welcome back to the minute women podcast my name is grace and i'm linnea and this week we're doing a fun little have you got a minute however it's not as much of a story time so before we get into it i have a story to share okay. if that's okay with you grace if I you am... have a minute it'll only be like literally a minute i i'm here for it i'm ready okay so uh as some of you of our avid listeners um have listened to the podcast they've heard about little blue which was my Toyota Corolla, my 2007 Toyota Corolla. End of an uh, era. I know. So I have recently sold Little Blue. If you're deeply interested, you should go follow my personal Instagram and read my Kijiji ad because it was something of a something of a, a work of art, really. Uh, one of my friend's mothers told me that it was a Pulitzer Prize winning Kijiji ad. And so I really ran with that. It didn't really surprise me because Linnea is a person <laughs> of se- sentimental, right? Like yeah. very sentimental. She's a cancer, guys. Like it's oh, through and through. <laughs> through and through. And so it didn't really surprise me when like she sent me a screenshot of the Kijiji ad. And I was like, why am I crying? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway... It was, I sold it to a really nice man. He and his family had just immigrated to Canada and he oh was, my yeah, God. sweet family. They have a brand new baby. He came from Nigeria and like really needed a car. And I was like, it's nothing special. And he's like, no, it's okay. He's like, we just need a car to get from point A to point B. And he's like, I've heard like a Toyota is a really reliable car. So it was good. Now I will say when I posted that ad within seven minutes, I had 26 people trying to buy my car and a bidding war ensued um so but anyway anyway i digress it was sad i sold my little baby little blue uh to purchase big red who's my new car not much bigger than little blue but just a little bit newer uh, still not still not spectacular she's a 2010 uh but air conditioning <gasps> cruise control power locks and power windows so you know i'm living large it was amazing. My first trip to Halifax, I drove to Halifax this weekend and to drive to the city with cruise control and air conditioning when you never experienced that was life changing. So I don't know if people <laughs> truly appreciate what it's like to have a car that, but just like power locks. Yeah. Oh, just buddy. <laughs> the amount of times I have gotten out of Linnea's old car. And not lock the door and just left it somewhere. Thankfully, it never got broken into, but I felt no. so bad no. every single time. And it's not like you can get away with it because Linnea then has to manually unlock the door to let you in. <laughs> yeah. And so it's very evident when you just left the yep. car in a parking lot overnight sometimes, <laughs> totally unlocked in the city of Halifax. <laughs> yeah. So, so now I have this new car. A little old couple with kids in Cape Breton, actually, Grace. Um, So they bought the car brand new in 2010. They've literally driven the car around Bridgewater and to Cape Breton once every year (laughs) since they got the car. Um, And so it's in perfect condition. It was like 140,000 kilometers. Like just a just a great little perfect car. Very, very cheap. Um, They were just happy to see it go to a good home. Great. So I get this car. It's super clean, like spick and span clean, like they cleaned it. However, what I did not know, what my father who helped me find this car did not know, is that the people had two like German shepherds and a cat who they took everywhere in this car. 
And so the entire air system, that beautiful, sweet, sweet AC is all full of pet dander, which I am very allergic to. So the first time I drove in the car, oh I God. drove for like 25 minutes. I was driving from Bridgewater to Lunenburg and I was dying. I got to my parents, my mom and Paul's to show them my new car. And my eyes are like bloodshot watering. My face, I, I don't know what's wrong. Like, I don't know what's going on. So we eventually got in touch with the people. They were like, oh, yeah, we're so sorry. Like, we vacuumed it, but obviously it's not out of, like, the air system. So I had to get, like, take the air filtrator, like, filtration system apart and, like, clear all that out and change the air exchanger and do this thing called a scent bomb, which you can, like, get from a like, auto parts store, which, like, purifies the air and like gets into the vents the car <laughs> almost killed me <laughs> and not but, how you'd expect <laughs> and not how you'd expect um but yeah that's my little story i said goodbye to little blue hello Aww. to big red and uh we're getting along famously now bigger and better hopefully yeah. yeah it's only up from here when the car almost kills you on the first day right <laughs> <laughs> so this week we're doing another high gam oops uh, because I didn't write an episode because I was on vacation. And she, <laughs> yes, you're perfect. A work vacation. I had to work while I was there, but it's fine. I got to go home to Cape Breton, and yeah. I got to go to Ingadish, which is in the Cape Breton Highlands. And so I was there with my partner, and basically, he's never he's never been to Ingadish before. And the the flex thing you do in Ingadish is you hike Mount Franny. Which, yeah. which is, like, a short hike relative to, like, a lot of hikes. You can do it in the morning. Like, it's three hours round trip. Um, but it's steep as hell, especially when you're uh, a lumpy nerd like me, who doesn't do a whole lot of cardio in their day-to-day -day <laughs> life. That's all I'm saying. So we go, we do for Annie. Before we go, Eric is like, have you ever seen a moose in the Cape Breton Highlands? And I was like, yes, but only on the Shetty Camp side. So that's like the western side. And we're on like the eastern side, like hundreds of miles. I don't know if that's true. Math we're gonna is not be my fine, strong babe. suit. We're oh, going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Like a long ways off from any moose I have ever seen. We're going up this fucking mountain. It's steep as hell. I'm tired and sweaty as hell because we're also in a heat wave. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. And we go up. And I hear to the left the biggest uh, crash no. No. in the woods. And I look over a thousand pound bull moose is 20 feet from us charging. No. I am not joking. I don't have any photos -uh. because thankfully fight or flight kicked in and like photo was not an option. <laughs> So I didn't take a picture. Fight, flight, or photo. This is the this is 2021. I know. <laughs> so like, <laughs> don't question me. But I promise, I have no evidence. But there was this thousand pound bull moose running through the woods. Thankfully, away from us. I don't know exactly what it was running from, but that's a terrifying thought to think about. Um, <laughs> I have never, I, I asked Eric afterwards, like, have you ever seen me run faster? He's like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> bulleting up the steepest part of this hike to get away from this giant <laughs> moose with, like, a full rack of antlers. It was so massive. And Eric, like, is valiantly staying behind like a dummy Why? to make sure that the moose is not following us. And I was just like around the corner on the hike like, Eric, Eric, <laughs> are you too scared to move? <laughs> and he was like, no, I'm just making sure the moose isn't coming after us. I was like, get your butt up this mountain. Get now. away from the moose. <laughs> It's the most dangerous animal in the Highlands. Get away. Well, like, people are like, does Nova Scotia have moose? And I'm always like, not really. I'm like, maybe like four in the I whole know. province. I'm like, they live in New Brunswick. They come into Amherst, like, by accident. Like, they're, they're not here. Like, you're going to hit a deer. You're not going to hit a moose. A hundred percent. I mean, even bears. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah. Like, if someone was like, are you more likely to see a bear or moose in Nova Scotia? I'd be like, bear. bear. Bear, bobcat, deer, pheasant. Like, there's lots of weird things you're going to see. But... <laughs> a fat 
plump but, like, bird. Moose, <laughs> moose does not top the list. So it was terrifying. Um, that is terrifying. But it's one of those things where, like, if you're not around moose, you don't, like, appreciate how fucking big they are i've only seen one moose and it was driving back from ontario and i saw it in new brunswick and it was like where they have like fencing they have like fencing in new brunswick so the moose don't stumble onto the road because yeah. they're not like deer they're not going to jump over it like whatever like a moose is going to kill you if it like runs, yes. if your car runs into it so like they protect people from the moose like a deer it's probably not going to kill you if it runs into your car. But yeah, I saw one and I couldn't believe how big it was. And we just drove by it on the highway. And I was like, that mother frigger is a big boy. <laughs> like, it's like the biggest horse you've ever seen. Yeah. And then like thicker with weapons on its head. <laughs> Huge weapons. <laughs> but anyways... I'm using my near encounter with a moose as my excuse. That rhymed. And it my was My near cute. encounter with a moose is an excuse. <laughs> my moose excuse <laughs> for why we don't have a, a like actual uh, Minute Women episode. But we have a high yeah. game. And we've decided that, you know, after a year and a half of doing this podcast, which uh. is crazy, um, we're going to test our knowledge to see. Yeah. If we're, like, smarter than Canadian fifth graders when it comes to Canadian history. <laughs> I was going to say, like, my only stressor when you said that all day today, I was like, but math. Like, please, no math. <laughs> no math, just history. So we're going, so the Canadian Encyclopedia, uh -huh. um, they do little, like, quizzes, basically, to, like, test your knowledge in Canadian history. And so we are going to do the standard one. Then oh, we're, then we're going to do the hard one. OK, OK. And I've got a feeling that maybe we'll do better than average. I don't know. OK, well, let, let's see. I I have not looked ahead. I just like I tab I them. And so we're just going to we're going to roll with the punches. So listeners, you know, play along with play us. Play along. Make it a drinking game. You know? Oh, yeah. For on, sure. on your Wednesday morning commute while you listen to the Minute Women <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Sip that coffee. Happy hump day. <laughs> so if you want to look up, uh, basically just go to the Canadian Encyclopedia website and look at their quizzes. So we're going to do the history quiz. It is 12 questions. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. We are already in territory where I don't know how to pronounce the words. Oh, gosh. So the first question Canada's motto, Amare Uske Ard Mar. Oh, I know this. Means, it's, it's Latin. It's Latin. <laughs> I know it. I know it. Multiple choice uh, means from sea to sea. Yes. <laughs> Wait, you have to hear the rest of the options. Okay. What are the other options? <laughs> a great unknown land, from mountain to mountain, a land under the sky. Well, there's no mountains on the other side. There's only mountains on one side, so you can't go mountain to mountain. <laughs> Infallible logic. C to I C. Agree. <laughs> okay, I, I agree. <gasps> Correct. Okay. Oh, my God. That was going to be so embarrassing if I was wrong. I came out so <laughs> confident. I was like grade nine social studies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Archaeologists believe that the first humans arrived in Canada... From A, the southern U.S. by land, B, Africa by ice flows, Ugh. C, Asia via Alaska, or D, Europe by sea. Granted, you are at a great disadvantage because you don't get to see the options after I read them. Oh, that's um, true. But we're working together. I think that it's it's Asia via Alaska, right? The Barren Strait? I would think so. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that makes sense. The only other one that sort of makes sense to me is like the southern U.S. by land. But yeah, it's not the icebergs. Let's just scratch <laughs> that from Africa. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to say Asia via Alaska. Sure. Correct. OK, thank goodness. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. <laughs> For all you people who thought it was Europe. By sea, go watch Pocahontas and then get back to me. <laughs> you racist. <laughs> okay, what's the next one? You made a noise. Okay, so 
this one is just going to show our maritimeness because we don't know anything past Ontario. Oh, no, it's a prairie question. <laughs> Oil was discovered at Lydic, Alberta in A, February 1947, B, August 1971, C, April 1955, or D, July 1886. What the months must be significant. When do you think is prime like oil finding season? I'm trying to remember Good the Dukes point. of Hazard. Did it look wintry? So I think it's either like the July 1886 one, or maybe like April 1955. 1955. What was the other one? Uh, August 1971. But that seems too late. That seems late. That seems way too late. Yeah, I think. Well, maybe, but it's the only one in the 1800s, so maybe it's just to trick you. Maybe. I don't know. It's C or D. Ugh. F- phone a friend. Audience 50-50. <laughs> I wish I had a coin to flip. Let's go C. Let's go C. C? Okay. C, sure. Incorrect. Oh, no, it was the February one. Okay, was so it, it? So oil was discovered at Lodic, Alberta in February 1947. In winter. I know, but that was a good instinct. What Where, are they well, doing? Well, that's all I could think. I was like, how did you... Like, how did that happen? Aren't things frozen? All right. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a heritage minute someday. While I was up in Cape Breton, <laughs> I saw this woman wearing a hoodie that said, I bleed black. And then on the back, it said, I support Alberta oil. And I was like, oh, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's so like, trashy. <laughs> that's like the, you know, you're from Nova Scotia when book that was done by Michael the Adder, which one of the things yeah. is, you know, you're from Nova Scotia if you live in Fort McMurray. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. Since 1870, Canadian Armed Forces have been used to maintain public order in Canada under the Act to Aid Civil Civil Power 140 times, 20 times, 0 times, or 320 times. Those are varying numbers. I would say we get rid of the exponents, right? 0 and 300? Yeah, I'm trying to think because when we did our Stratford episode, they said it yeah. was the last time the Canadian military had been deployed yeah. to assist in like public discourse. But I'm tr- I don't know when that was. I'm thinking it's 20. Mm, maybe it's zero. I don't know. Maybe it's zero times. I think it might. Maybe. Maybe. It, maybe it, mm, or no, 20 makes sense because I'm pretty sure that stuff was happening like the early 1900s so when you have all those union busting things and then they right. stop doing it right so 20 let's go with 20 oh my god it was 140 times oh my gosh <sighs> your instinct was right it was not zero or 320 times <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close <laughs> yeah we're around it oh my god how are we supposed to know this okay what is this the <laughs> The famous words, Alexander Mackenzie from Canada by land, July 1793, were inscribed on a boulder, A, at the mouth of the Columbia River, B, at the mouth of the Bella Coola River, C, at the mouth of the Fraser River, or D, at the mouth of the Saskatchewan River. Fraser River. That's the only one I recognized. Nope, it was the Bella Coola River. <laughs> what is the Bella Coola River? <laughs> I don't know. We're bad at this. When did the British Empire become the British Commonwealth? In 1919, in 1954, in 1867, or in 1931? Ooh. I feel like it's 54. Like, after World War II. Yeah. Uh, ooh, no, no. Because we went to World War II as Canada. Yeah, but they have other colonies. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I'm yeah. just thinking Newfoundland until right. 1945. It's 31 or 54. Yes. <laughs> it's one of those two. My gut says 54. Okay. Let's go with 54. Damn it. It was 31. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. The, okay. <laughs> name the Scottish Lord who founded the Red River Colony. MacDonald, uh, Fraser, <laughs> Selkirk, or Simpson? Wait. No, we, we talked about Red River. We have. Selkirk? That name sound, does not sound familiar, but I trust you. Maybe it's I Simpson. Don't... Simpson? Sure. It was Selkirk. <laughs> <laughs> it loves okay. to tell me that I've we've only gotten two questions right. <laughs> oh, no! It keeps being like, you got two questions right. It's like, I know. 
You're like, I know, bitch. Leave me alone. <laughs> Which Canadian prime minister died at Windsor Castle, London, England, just after meeting Queen Victoria? Uh, Sir Johnny MacDonald. We know it's not that. It's not him. Sir Charles Tupper, Sir Mackenzie Boyle, or Sir John S. D. Thompson? It's definitely not Sir John A. Mm-mm. I don't know. It's definitely not McDonald. I feel very confident that. If it was a true or false, did McDonald die after meeting the queen? I'd be like, false. False. You're wrong. I'm a genius. You're wrong. I'm going to close my eyes and scroll my finger and okay. pick one. Okay. It was Thompson and I picked Tupper. Oh. With my eyes closed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, next one. The name of the German spy who helped bring down the Diefenbaker government was what? We should have listened to Canadian uh, spies are boring. Are boring, yeah. I do not know any of this. Stephen <laughs> Baker, though. I know that, okay? Yeah. All right. Who are the people? So, Mata Hari, Marlene Dietrich, which I don't think it's Marlene Dietrich. I'm pretty sure that's like an actress. Okay. <laughs> Gerda Munsinger and Igor Guzenko. So, I don't think it's Igor because that's the only man. It's it's Gerda so, then. You think it's Gerda? Yeah. We're correct. Yes. Okay. We're <laughs> back in it, buddy. Back in it. Born at Brunswick Place, Scotland, on the tenth of January, eighteen fifteen. Was it Archibald McNabb, Sir John Alexander Macdonald, uh, Simon Fraser, or Agnes McPhail? I know Sir John A. Macdonald is born in Scotland. I know he's born in Scotland. Think about those years. Does that make him old enough? Yes. Okay. No, it, it is him because remember that they, they didn't know his exact date of birth if it was the ninth or the tenth. Oh right. Right, yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. On a roll. All right. Born in Nova Scotia, eighteen forty four, Joshua Slocum was the first man to discover gold in Canada, climb the highest peak on all continents sail around the world alone or captain the blue nose it's not captain the blue nose no <laughs> i know that for sure i don't think it would be discover gold there's climb the highest peaks yeah. on all con all continents including yeah, no. including no antarctica i would say it's the the circumnavigation one yeah correct Woo. we're finishing strong we're finishing strong yeah really pulling through. okay last question Ball and stick game, known as bag of tataway, is mm. either croquet, baseball, hockey, or lacrosse. I would say lacrosse, Hawk right? Hockey. You think? It's a ball and stick game. Oh, ball and stick. Then yeah, maybe lacrosse. Correct. Oh, thank God. Okay, so <laughs> with a strong finish, we got 50%. We got 6 out of 12. Okay. We didn't fail. We didn't fail. That's a passing grade. Now, I have the harder one. So let's see if we can, let's see what we do for this. Let's those. do the harder one and let's, um, let's try and like rapid fire it. Let's try and go with our gut because I think that was a problem with this one. True. Okay. So Canadian history, hard. Okay. And these are questions questions based on the real citizenship test. So this is what newcomers to the country have to do. The citizenship test is insane. My friend Kaya, shout out to Kaya. Her mom, Nalanchina, had to do the Canadian citizen test. And it was insane. Like I've, I've heard they're crazy and unrealistic. Like Super unrealistic. You're never going to need to know it's like, what's half the, this information. What's the third line of the fourth verse of O Canada backwards? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Samuel de Champlain's life was endangered during the winter he stayed here in his first voyage to Quebec. What was the threat? Scurvy, malnutrition, an assassination attempt, or exposure? I feel like it's one of the first two, and it's also kind of a trick, because isn't scurvy a form of malnutrition? Scurvy, yeah. It was an assassination attempt? What? <laughs> On Samuel de Champlain? What? Oh my god. All we right. We'll have to dig into that at some point. <laughs> Next what, one. <laughs> what percentage of Canadian men and women who served were killed or wounded in the First World War? 19%, 55%, 42%, or 37%? 42. 37%, but close. Damn it. Close. That was really close. 37 to 42, that's really close. It's really close. 
When did the word Canada start appearing on maps? 1850s, 1330s, 1550s, or the 1700s? Canada. 1550s, maybe? Early, yeah. Correct. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Got one. Canadian Lieutenant General Romeo Dallaire was commander yeah. of the UN peacekeeping mission in which country? I know. What is it? It's Rwanda. Correct. Yeah, he came to my school. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to dig into that at some I point. I got to hear him talk. He's, yeah. <laughs> On this high game, I want to talk about the genocide of Rwanda. Yeah. <laughs> and then we watched, we watched Hotel Rwanda in class, which had Don Cheadle in it and was very depressing. Um, <laughs> With him? Well, no, before oh. we met him. Because he's in it. He's in the movie Hotel Rwanda. There's a guy who plays Romeo Dallaire. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like he was actually in it. <laughs> no. And I mean, he's a very cranky, jaded man. But I mean, like, who wouldn't be? Next question. During the First World War, the white feather was a symbol of bravery, patriotism, cowardice, or celebration. I'm pretty sure it's cowardice. Okay. Because, like, ladies would go around and put them in the pockets of men who weren't enlisting. I trust you. It's correct. Go. Get it. Yeah. In 1713, when Acadia was finally seceded to the English, what did the British demand of the Acadians? They pledged an oath to the British ca crown... They become indentured servants. They join the 13 colonies of the South. They give up their lands. I'm pretty sure it's pledge an oath to the British crown. All of the above. <laughs> um, Eventually. <laughs> it's either that or give up their lands. So they didn't actually give up their land till the expulsions in the 1750s. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is pre-expulsion. This is so, pre-expulsion. Yeah. So, yeah. Sign an oath. Correct. Yeah. Awesome. We're doing better in this one. You're right. We just had to like. Yeah. Trust your Rapid God. fire. Hiawatha who is considered instrumental in the foundation of the Iroquois Confederacy, which is now known as the Six Nations of the Grand River, is thought to have been born in the 14th century, the 15th century, the 12th century, or the 10th century. I have no idea. 12th. It was the 15th century. But that's okay. They're just numbers. Numbers are hard. So, question eight. The Great Coalition that helped... Yeah. To put confederation in motion was comprised of which three politicians? I think we know this one. Okay. Read so, them to me. Okay. Thomas McGee, George Brown, and Charles Tupper. Charles Tupper, George Brown, and Johnny McDonald. Joseph Howe, George Etienne Cartier, and Amour de Comos. Johnny McDonald, George Brown, and George Etienne Cartier. I think it's the last one. I. I feel very confident that it's Johnny McDonald and Cartier. Yes, me too. I don't know who George yeah. Brown is, unfortunately. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're doing so good. I'm pretty sure. We've already passed. We can't fail. Oh, that's amazing. Didn't George Brown go on to be prime minister? I don't know. I, I am so bad with Canadian prime ministers. Mm. I have to listen to uh, Craig's, like, um, yeah from john to justin series but i haven't yet yes. which you um, should go listen to the host of canadian history x did a whole series on canadian prime ministers okay next one the following politician was opposed to the wilfrid laurier government's compromise to canada's participation in the boer war fearing that canadian involvement in a british war would set a dangerous precedent for all conflicts implicating britain in the future and they were right um <laughs> is it henry Borassa, uh, John McRae, Israel Tart, or Robert Borden. It's definitely not John McRae. He's not a politician. No. Robert Borden? That's the only name I recognize. That's the only name I know, yeah. I was like, that's the only name that rings any kind of bell. It seems he's it seems kind of young, but also he was old when he was the prime minister. Yeah. It was Henry Borassa. Who is that guy? Henri Borassa. I what don't is he know. Doing? I guess he's he. Well, he was opposing the Wilfrid Laurier government's compromise to Canada's participation in the Boer War. But and he was right. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> That's what he was. Okay. Last question. Okay. What was the name of the early 19th century French Canadian militia? Les habitants, les voyageurs, les coureurs de bois, les coureurs de bois. Or les voltigeurs. Not les habitants. That's the Montreal Canadiens. No. Like, they're the Habs. It's not that. 
I feel like it's one of the V ones. Maybe it's Voyager. Vo- well, Voyager are the merchants. Yeah, that's like the, the yeah, working. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know if they're one and the same. Maybe it's Voltiger. What's what's Voltiger mean in French? Like I the have volatile, no idea. Volatile, the volatile, the. Is that or Les Coureur de Bois? Bois B O I S. Yeah, like wood. Yeah, like I don't. Maybe know. it's that. Maybe. Let's go for it. Okay. Oh, it was Les Voltiger. Damn. Yeah. All right. Well, we scored the same. So what did oh. we learn? I have no idea. <laughs> we kind of know Canadian history. We kind of know <laughs> Canadian history. <laughs> I yeah. I did have one other quiz if you have the time, but we also don't have to do it if you're if you gotta no! go. No. Okay. No. Hit me with it. So to to just kind of build up our ego again, I also got a BuzzFeed quiz. Oh, yes. <laughs> that said only Excellent. true Canadians can get ten out of ten. <laughs> Excellent. I'm here for it. <laughs> it starts with this trivia quiz is a boot to blow your mind. Oh no. <laughs> okay. What cartoon character was based on a Canadian black bear? Winnie the Pooh, Baloo, Yogi Bear, or Smokey Bear? It's Winnie. Yeah. Duh. Duh. Oh, God, we're so smart. Ugh. What products do Canadians eat more of than people in other countries? Maple <laughs> syrup and honey, cheese and pasta, pastries, or sugar? I, I'm going to go with maple syrup and honey. It, yeah. No. Cheese what? and pasta? Yes. Craft dinner. Oh, true. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What pizza was invented in Canada? Buffalo, margarita, macaroni, or Hawaiian? I'm pretty sure it's Hawaiian. I hope it's not macaroni. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Hawaiian. For some Hawaiian, reason, that's Hawaiian like. Hawaiian definitely wasn't invented in Hawaii. No. So go for it. It's Hawaiian. Okay. Hawaiian pizza was invented in 1962 by Canadian guy Sam Pano- Panopoulos. It's up there with the Caesar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in terms of controversial foods. It is. It really is. If For those of you who've never had Hawaiian pizza, which I think it's pretty international at this point, <laughs> it's just like ham and, and pineapple on your pizza. It's so good. I, I'm personally it's really a fan. Good. I like Hawaiian. If you have to get a two-topping pizza from Domino's... It's- Hawaiian. The way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Try it with bacon, though. Get bacon and pineapple. Ooh, or prosciutto if you want to go oh, bougie. Oh, yeah. If you want to get really fancy, it's, it's good. Okay. Which okay. animal causes about 250 car accidents in Canada <laughs> every year? Reindeer, geese, wolves, or bears? Oh, that's actually difficult. I would say geese. I was going to say 250 really isn't that many. No. Um, and we're not talking like totaling your car, but geese are a problem. I mean, unless they're referring to deer as reindeer, but I think it's more than that. <laughs> yeah. If it was deer, it'd be like way more. Yeah. A couple thousand. I would think geese. Maybe geese. Oh, it was reindeer. About 2.4 million reindeer that live in Canada, uh, about 250 of them cause car accidents. <laughs> Yeah, they're not reindeer though, people. We're not we're not literally in the North Pole. No. All right. What city in Canada has two exclamation marks in its name? Oh, I know this one. Okay. What? Is it Western Ward Ho, Ed Munton, Osh- oh. Oshawawa? I know or what it is. Saint Louis de Haha. St. Louis de Haha. Ha. St. Louis de Haha, ha, <laughs> which is the greatest city name in Canada. <laughs> I've only ever driven past it. I've never gone into St. Louis de Haha, ha, but you see it on the highway if you're driving to, yeah. to New Brunswick. <laughs> Some license plates on cars in northern Canada are shaped like what animal? I think you know this without me even saying. It's a polar bear. It's a polar bear. It's the only non-rectangular shaped license plate in the world. It's so cute. It is really cute. I know a couple, like, people who have gone up to teach up north, and they always bring the plate home. Like, oh. if you get a plate, because they're cool. It's the best souvenir. Yeah, it's a cool plate. So the only desert in Canada is located where? Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, or Ontario? I have no idea. I would say it's a snow desert. Oh, true. Maybe Manitoba, then? Maybe northern Manitoba? Yeah. Oh, it's British Columbia. 
And it's what? not a snow desert. What? Nikimt Desert is the only desert in Canada, and it's located in British Columbia. What dessert do Canadians consume more <laughs> of than people in other countries? What are the options? Cheesecake. Donuts. There isn't words, but I'm assuming by the pictures it's pie and then ice cream. I don't know if they get more specific than that. The words aren't showing up. Uh, pie, ice cream. Cheesecake and donuts. Oh. Maybe cheesecake? I was thinking donuts just because of like Tim Hortons, but I guess the True. States also has donut shops. They have Krispy Kreme, which yeah. Eric loves to tell me is the best thing in the world. It, I will agree with Eric. They're very good. They're like, they're just like a upper level uh, sour cream glazed donut. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I can get behind that. Yeah. Um, geez, I don't, maybe cheesecake. I like cheesecake. I do too. It's on like every menu. Everywhere, yeah. Oh, it was donuts. God damn it. All right. What Canadian city is the northernmost permanently inhabited place in the world? Alert, Dawson City, Nelson, or Caslow? Dawson City, yeah. Alert. That's pretty northern. Dawson's really northern. It is. It's in the Yukon, though. So I think, like, if there was anything in Nunavut or the Northwest Territories, it'd be further north. Like, Nelson, Caslow, Alert, and Dawson City. But Dawson City is the only one I recognize. Um, let's say Dawson, just because I know where it is. It's Alert. Where is that? The city of Alert in Nunavut is considered the northernmost permanently inhabited place in the world. It shows a man with lots of signs. I thought you were going to say lots of polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Fill in the blank. Uh, According to an old Toronto law, it's illegal to drag a dead blank down Young Street on Sundays. Moose, person, horse, or mule? horse or mule yeah i do feel like uh commemorating the fact that i saw a moose we should just pick moose for the hell of it let's for the hell of it Ah, you were right it was a horse that's the one we did the worst on who where does buzzfeed find their statistics anyway i don't know (laughs) i don't know if we learned anything by doing this but i had a great time i had the best time (laughs) that was delightful (laughs) And I promise next week we will have a normal Men and Women episode. We'll go back to our regular scheduled program. But for this week, we learned that we're not smart. We're not smart. Moose are real. Very real. Uh, my car is trying to kill you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening to another high gam. Another have you got a minute. That was a fun one. I sufficiently put in my place by a fifth grade the fifth grade educational system in Canada however it was still a lot of fun and it's always fun chatting and hanging out with you buddy oh thanks buddy oh and if you want to catch up with us if you haven't gotten enough or if you want to check out our normal formatted episodes you can go to our website men and women podcast.ca we have all of our episodes there you'll also find links to all of our social media pages and our merch store which has our new artwork uh on some t-shirts mugs hoodies whatever you could ever want so go check that out and we'll see you guys next week for another episode yeah bye bye <laughs>